Previously on Rust Anatomy, you saw us add some stuff to the front of the boat. We're going to carry on with that theme. Get a bit more in there. <laughs> what we do. Mm. I took a stroll downtown this evening when I heard music echo through the night. The same old songs that I heard the night before So I started running so I wouldn't be too late I didn't think that I would ever see your face again But I was wrong, yeah I was wrong I have a little update with our um, Unimig welder so, we thought that it was doing the same thing. It's not doing the same thing as it was previously. It's doing a slightly different problem. And we think it's the board sitting behind these dials. Um, so I rang them, it's out of warranty. Um, so I was assuming, you know, we're gonna have to basically fix it, send it down to them, whatever. Um, the service guy in Brisbane diagnosed it for me. He's pretty confident it's this little board. He said, there's three little plugs. I'll have it in the mail for you today. You should have it tomorrow. Uh, it is a Thursday now. So um, he said, you should have it in the, in the post tomorrow and you can literally undo this. It's all low voltage DC. Just replace it with the, the new circuit board and you should be good up and back up and running. So um, like I said, he's awesome to talk, to talk to and he's really good in terms of like looking after his products. So I do like that about them. They are pretty bloody cool. And this is an old machine. This is three years old. It's had a 12 month warranty. So it gives you an idea of how after, how long after the warranty these guys are still fixing it so um, yeah it's pretty impressive but what he did confirm was I now understand what's happening inside the welder it's running at 28 volts no matter what I do um, and I can vary my wire feed so I can weld with it but I have to weld in spray transfer which is fast and hot and quite lovely I do quite like uh, spray transfer um, but I don't have a choice to back it off. So we're doing a lot of that today. We're not doing slow, you know, um, short circuit arc. We're gonna be doing blasting it on. Now that we know our design so that we can rebuild this without having to destroy the anchor room floor, we're gonna be adding in some 25 by six mil straps that go on each of the new stations. And that allows us to weld from the outside and do a single continuous weld rather than having to climb on the inside as well and do double continuous. So these are the small straps that go on every single uh, bulkhead or rib. So let me translate. These are straps welded to the ribs and bulkheads so that we can cut a slot in the new hole from the outside and weld from the outside and that means we don't have to cut the floor above and weld from the inside. This is quite cool. This bottom one, as this comes down it's trying to, it's the, the frame is almost curving forward and this is trying to stay straight so it's coming further and further away from the frame. So, and it's also sticking out from the boat as well so it needs to go in and forward but by jamming a clamp in like that it's worked out quite well. That that's only like a one or two mil gap and I can close it up further but that's beautiful to weld so that was quite a neat little thing I started doing a run you can see this one here hopefully the light allows you to see it but it's coming up okay I'm happy with that but then down here we're getting a bit of gas so I, uh, a bit of wind so I just completely stopped because I'm Gonna have to grind that out and it's gonna get more and more awkward as I get down into this part here, which is very much a V. Um, this one here, same sort of deal. I got about, I don't know, five inches. That's pretty horrid when it comes to porosity. So we'll chop that out of the grinder and press on when it's not quite so windy. This side here is quite good. You can see it's it's basically penetrating through the six mil and just, just reaching this side here. So I know that that's quite a hot weld. You can also see the heat line as well coming out uh, probably 15 mil and then a little bit more down here where it obviously gets a bit hotter. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with that. It's, I think that's gonna hold on pretty darn good. Okay, I think we're racing the weather. I wanna try and get this big bulkhead out. I'll try and take it out as one piece and that'll serve as a basis for a template. And if I don't get it out in one piece, I will take it out in many pieces. So that I don't lose where this is mounted, I've just put a small nick in the keel and then up on the plate up here, I've got a small nick. Same on the other side. It allows me just to line it up perfectly with where the original was. Um, saves having to do too many measurements. I trust they got it right when they built the boat. I'm just going to follow what they did. In preparation for getting rid of this bulkhead, I've made this side here is bulkhead three. That's bulkhead one, so ignore that side. This is the side that focuses on the basically intersection at the keel, how far off it stops, and then that side. I'll show you how that sits. 
put that in there like that. Wiggle it down. There you go. You can see it basically lines up perfect with the original. So that's our bottom intersection. And then I've made a new template. You can see there's a curve down one side. Follow that up and you can basically see that that aluminium now is the same shape. It's a wee bit hard with that light, but that aluminium is the same shape as that station. Bulky some. And then I've got a measurement for the top and a total height. Sorry for the fantastic camera work, but I think we are ready to start smashing that bulkhead out. Sometimes hard to tell, but I think that's still tight. Right, well it's currently at loosey goosey. The top is all free, um, but the top is also bigger than the hole it has to come down to. And that sump that protrudes through the floor of the anchor room is stopping it getting free movement to dangle around and come out clean. So uh, I'll probably just chop this one up into a couple of pieces and that'll allow me to get it out. But it does make me wonder how I'm gonna attempt the bulkhead going in. It's possible to put the bulkhead in as two pieces, like slice it straight down the center line and put one piece in, then put a second piece in and weld them all together. Uh, I really don't want to do that if I can get away with it not doing that. Um, so we'll get this one out and then I think we'll just, I don't know, wedge around, try a few different things and see if we can get it in in one piece. The daggy old chop mark that I just made with the uh, oxy torch. I need to clean that up. You see the plates in the corner that we put in a long time ago. So this plate here uh, we did in oh, maybe two years ago, and this is a plate that goes into the fuel tank. The, they were both eaten out and corroded away in that corner. Uh, over there, you can see that it hasn't been painted, but um, that's okay. There's plenty of thickness. Now I did see this. You can see that beam at the top. There's rust up there, uh, and it's been cut off short over there when I did some floor repairs. I'm not actually going to repair that, I'm going to leave that as is because uh, the, the floor actually doesn't sit on it, so it's almost completely irrelevant. Uh, it doesn't go into the fuel tank and cause any dramas, um, but this now is a really easy space to work in, I've got plenty of room. So uh, yeah, we'll get another bulkhead and another rib set in here. I reckon this is cleaning up alright. Okay, the rain has just started to come in, you can see over in the back of the field it's pretty grey and miserable. There's two buggers trying to 
mow the lawn over there. They're gonna get absolutely soaked. We've got a huge paddock to mow and two tiny little mowers. Um, I think we've got torrential rain for the next three days or something like that. Uh, so probably not gonna get any more done on that front. My dog bravely, bravely telling this wee fella that we don't accept intruders or marauders. Bravely communicating that. Yes, you were, you big fluffy boy. I saw him. I'm coming to you live from an electronics repair lab somewhere in Bundaberg. This is the welder that we use all the time, and we think this is the circuit board that's died inside. It's located just behind here, so I'm gonna rip this apart it's all low voltage so I can do it the repair guy me and him talked about what it is um, and basically everything is sort of yeah low voltage I think the highest it does is 60 volts but most of the time it's 20 28 or less um, so yeah rip this apart plug this in and if this works the welder's good to go if it doesn't work there's something else going on with the welder and we'll have to consider what we do with it um, but I spoke to him and he was fantastic about it he was saying that this should give us like you know five to ten years of good service so the fact that one of these boards is gone it's almost not really that relevant because they're, they're basically new machines you can still buy these brand new um, and we can just keep replacing the parts as needed so um, it's probably representative of the environment that we're in the fact that it's had a circuit board done and then potentially this board has gone um, we're in a pretty salty environment and, and it shreds it like you can sort of see the screws on the front here are rusty I've replaced all the screws on the side with stainless, like it's just to be expected in this sort of environment. I think maybe that's having a go on the circuit boards. They don't last in this environment. Okay, there's three plugs on the back of this. One, two, three. This one was already unplugged. That might be part of the problem, I don't know. So swapping these circuit boards out is pretty straightforward. There's four screws and three plugs. So once we've got them all apart, we can get the two circuit boards side by side and compare them. Make sure they're exactly the same, both the front and the back. Once we know they're good, we can just reassemble the whole thing and get the welder back outside. Previously we couldn't alter voltage, so we had a really hot weld. I've got it set at the lowest possible setting I can for 0.9 wire, which is, uh, what have we got, 15 volts and 5, I don't know what it is, 5 meters a minute or something, an hour, I don't know, a wire feed, whatever it is, 5 is the wire feed. Um, and that's set for 2 millimeters uh, thickness steel, that's what you'd normally run on 2 mil, so it's an incredibly light, cold weld basically. Um, if it welds properly like this, it means that the board is working, so I'll show you what it's doing. Alright, there we go. Tiny little cold weld. Let's crank it up and I'll show you what it does. Right, so heaps more metals coming out, much more control. Seems to be working lovely. I actually like to run it a bit hotter than what the factory settings are, so just bump some temperature into it. Did a wee bit of tuning and started to get a much smoother bead. Admittedly, it's on crappy, rusty, painted steel, so, you know, I'll probably need to adjust it even, you know, slightly when I start getting into the nice new steel, but it's welding really nice now. Right, enough repairs and maintenance. Time to go and get some steel out of the truck so that we can cut out this new bulkhead. Oh, no, wait. Some guys filled the truck with pipes. We have to get them out first. So last week we spied these big plastic pipes. The hell are those pipes? Oh, it's got just right in front, straight in front. The pipes right in front. Just stop, yeah, stop, yeah. look. Huh. They're potentially perfect for our anchor room, but I need to figure out how big they are. 680. So they won't fit down the hatch. I have to chop the hatch apart. Which I'm open to doing. They're plastic. God, they look awesome.
This bulkhead is pretty straightforward to design up. Just need to make sure everything's square, measure out a triangle using the measurements that I took earlier, and then using the cardboard and aluminium templates that I've built off the old bulkhead. We just need to lay them out on top of this to get the curves into the side of the plate. Now that this is ground up and ready to go, it's quite heavy still and pretty awkward. So what I'm thinking is at the very top of this here, you've got this sump, but you've got a stainless floor up there. You can see that line that I bopped into the into the floor with the grinder was the floor of the anchor room, the roof of this or the deck head of this compartment. I'm gonna put a stainless chain welded onto that uh, floor there. And then I'll also put a link welded on here. Um, that'll allow me just to basically lift it up with a block and tackle rather than have to take the weight um, because it's just so much easier to get it up there with that and then I can manhandle it but I've also got a lot of grinding to do I've got to clean this up and then on the other side I've got to clean up on the actual inside of the hull where I gas cut off the old um, the old bulkhead same deal on this one here you can sort of see it's got light all this thing you can sort of see there's a lot of rubbish left on the side I've got to clean all of that off so um, the next job is a lot of grinding, uh, however I also need to put a hole in the centre of this bulkhead so we'll do exactly the same as what we did on the smaller one up here with the gas torch, we'll just knock a, a nice shape into this bulkhead as well. Jess and I were talking about what is the point of putting a hole in this bulkhead because it's not going to, it doesn't make any real difference in terms of strength and I was thinking maybe don't put a hole in it from a strength point of view but Jess brought up a really relevant point, is that how do you inspect this tank if you don't have that hole? So in the very far corner, up, up in there is a little half inch bung. When that's open, you can then get a camera into here and you can start looking through in this tank throughout the, you know, the various compartments. So with these holes in it, we're actually able to see everything with a camera. Um, and hence we need to basically bot something in this so that we can get that camera from this side through and up to the front of the boat. Now that I've added some lightness, it's time to grind a bit more into it. Lovely, silky smooth. Nothing on there that's gonna chop anyone up into the future. The thing I love about this job, it's one of those ones that you get to do a really good job of and you're proud of your work and all that sort of stuff and then you weld the sides on and no one ever sees it again for 50 years. Time to cut some chain, and make some lifting points on this bulkhead. All right, we're at a stage where we can hoist this up in the morning, we'll wait for the glue to dry on this one and the one inside the boat, and then uh, get the chain block out and we'll start getting this into position. After all the rain we've had, taking Fluff out for his walk, and it's an absolute mill pond. Just glass. This little puppy up here, this little white one, is Snoop's like favorite dog to see out on a run. Cattle dog is stalking. I don't know if his camouflage is working in this long grass. Do you miss me at all? Do you think about the things we used to do? No, you couldn't stand tall. So why didn't you, why didn't you call? So many years has gone by But I think about you, about you Ground up Bottom's nicely cleaned up on both sides Nice and shiny And then up the top You can sort of see it's, it's cleaned up enough to weld I don't know if that'll show up on the camera or not Light's a bit hard at the minute but um, Same deal over here There's paint dust and stuff over it But up the top you can sort of see there's a bit of rust 
So I want to sandblast that out because I'm not going to be able to grind that out and get a clean enough weld. And I want to have a weld right up in the top there. So yeah, a little bit down here that needs to be sandblasted as well. So a wee bit of blasting work to do and then that's ready to go. Weld is doing well. Um, this is a vertical up that I did when I was sort of setting the machine. It's, I could probably do a tidier one, but it's good enough. And that sort of compares to that one there. You can see that's a vertical down. You see it's a much, it was spray transfer, but vertical down, you can see it's a much flatter weld. Whereas this one here, there's a lot more material in there to hold on. Um, that's also a vertical up there, but I just don't think it's gonna show up in the light. Yeah, oh, there you go. That's, that's vertical down. It kind of sits quite flat. Um, I don't know if you'll see this side. No, you won't see this side. But there's also a lot of rubbish down the bottom here I've got to clean up. So, yep, overall, it's coming up all right. Got a few Ronstan um, micro blocks. I'm going to set up a, like a four to one purchase or three to one, something like that, whatever it is, um, purchase system, and then use that to try and lift this up and hold it up um, to get it in place. Looks like you're changing and all. Well, why didn't you, why didn't you call? So I've got to get it up to that mark there. You can see the grind that I put in and then also that cutoff going horizontal. That's the bottom of the original. That one's not so important. That one is important. Um, it's about, I don't know, 30 mil away on this side. Up the top it is, oh, there we go. There's our mark. So we're about probably 50 mil on that side. And where are we? Maybe about 70 mil on that side. We can probably manhandle it because there's a huge gap on that side. It's tipped over, that's what's going on. The challenge I have, this slot is very, very tight. So it's not freely moving back and forth and it's also trying to drive it uphill. So even if I belt it with this more hammer down there, it's not really moving, so I'm going to put a jack between these two and just force it out. <laughs> Try and not do it now then. Slowly getting there, you can sort of see this is the original. Slight amount of rust. New one. It's not fully welded, but we're getting there. I mean, that even sounds like six mil. So yesterday I got to tacking this in place. The bottom is in the right position. However, the top, if we come on this side here, you can see the old stub of the rib um, is, is basically stopping it going into place. I need a gas ax a bit more of that off. And then I come back out and around on exactly the same thing is happening on this side here. So this first job is to clear those so that we can get this in the right position because you can see that mark in the stainless up the top there is where I need to get it to. So it's about maybe 10 mil off um, or three fifths of a Fahrenheit, I think, in Imperial. So once we've got that into position, we can then start tacking it, but we can't do, if you sort of look down there, you can see the wobble in the hull on the plate itself on both sides, we have to get it in, into position and then we start having to manipulate the hull so that the hull um, doesn't have that wobble when we start putting ribs in. that's happening with the hammer would do it with the jack the far side has to go back and the front side has and this side has to go forward this is going to be a bit of a mission actually I might not be able to do it with this jack yeah is this oh no I can't no no it... so bottle jacks are tiny little hydraulic pumps this is a hydraulic pump basically and this is a ram this and gravity feeds oil into this so if I pump it right now to work if I do that it won't work because this is up high so you get an air bubble but if I do it that way it will work so I just have to position it so that that's always down come on you fucker
can just wait. So take me a minute. Thanks. Just don't go underneath any of it. If this pops, that's likely to drop. She ain't moving. I think I need to go higher. Expect a bong. Whoa, well, hang on. How much are you moving? Okay, it's not moving. Um, Can you explain what you're doing? Yeah. So there's a rib that comes down from above the stainless floor from the anchor room down into this crash bulkhead. It goes through the floor and welds onto the original bulkhead. The challenge is that um, I obviously had to cut that rib in order to get the old bulkhead out. Um, and there's a few jagged bits left from when I gas torched and I can't get the actual the head of the gas torch up close enough into the corner to get it out. Um, so I cut, the, I cut the new bulkhead down slightly so that I can then just weld that to what's left of that original rib. And that's, that's fine, it'll be just as strong. But the challenge is, is that I haven't quite got them perfect, so they're, slight, the whole, they're too big for the hole basically, so they're hitting each other when I try to jack it forward. And I thought it might be small enough that I could just put the jack in there and give it the heebie-jeebies and sort of bong it into place, but it's not happening. Um, so I probably need to just get the gas torch in there and give it a... You can't be tight if you're liquid, basically. Get the gas torch in there and just make it red and they'll move. But the jack will also crash down, so I'll do that standing off to the side and just allow the jack to crash down in a graceful and elegant engineering manoeuvre. Swan Lake would be proud. <laughs> like Swan Lake's a person? Swan Lake the person, yes. Mrs Swan Lake. <laughs> I know it's nothing now But it's so good to see you We do this every day what happens if you just weld in place? Uh, it's, it's okay. It's just that it's like... I could theoretically weld it where it is, but it's five millimeters out at the top. It's not the end of the world. Like, five mils, nothing on a bit like this. Like, but, it, but I just want to, if I can, try and get it to match the original. Like, I'll probably give up after this and just weld in place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Moved enough, I'll weld it and then get rid of the jet. I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight through the night I'm going to show you a horrible, horrible weld. I can't actually see what I'm doing and it's welding like crap but that's mainly metal, not necessarily the welder. But we do have it close enough down here that we can weld it. Um, and it's all nice and ground up and everything on both surfaces, so it's able to be welded. But the thing that I was most concerned about, if you look absolutely vertical up that bulkhead, it's pretty much dead straight now. Previously there was a warp, and I was worried that if I welded it in you know, too much, I'm gonna end up welding that warp in. I don't want that, I want it to be dead straight, but it's managed to straighten itself out by giving it the heebie-jeebies with the jack. It's actually taken that bend out and I've welded it top and bottom and now it's dead straight so I can weld it down that side and I know that it'll be okay. This other side, if you look along there, doesn't really show up on camera but there's quite a warp in there. And the reason I know that is because that mark there is where the bulkhead needs to be and that's where it's sitting and the difference is basically how much this panel has a warp in it. That's how flexible 6mm steel can be. I don't think I'm going to get this side into the original position. It's always going to be 5mm out, which is, which is okay. Um, it's not perfect, but it's acceptable. But, uh, but because of the warp, I'm going to have to push this side backwards. Uh, which probably means pushing against this rib, I'm thinking. But the rib isn't hugely strong in that. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll weld the blimmin sideways verticals in and that'll stiffen this rib up and then I'll push against it. Good, problem solved. And why is it, why is 5mm out? acceptable um because it's either that or it doesn't get done i, I literally can't get it in there but no but from a technical point of view yeah. five mil on that size metal on this position oh, of the boat like if it was if it was like say five mil this way it probably wouldn't be acceptable you probably want to clean it up more so you get a nice fair hull but five mil that way 
is going to make such a like if you'd be lucky if it made a millimeter difference probably in the shape of the hull like it's going to be so insignificant that it's almost irrelevant and what about when the boat's moving yeah. the torsion all of that five mil out that from perfectly difference. straight does yeah. it matter no it won't make any difference mm. whatsoever because the welds the welds come into their own then like this it's more about welding when you've got torsion and twisting and stuff like that, the five mil is pretty much relevant. And like you say, you can only do what you can do. So. Yeah. And even even from you, like, like no no steel boat is perfectly straight, even from you. So, um, like you know, brand new ships and stuff will always have, they're always asymmetric in one way or another because every time you weld something, it warps. That's right. So you're constantly welding, trying to counteract the warpage, but you'll never get it absolutely perfect, and therefore ships are always asymmetric. It's just the, how good a boat builder you are depends on how asymmetric, basically. <laughs> As part of strengthening out the front end of the boat, we're going to be adding in bits of steel in that orientation there so that um, we can basically make the front as rigid as possible. It doesn't add much weight. These are pretty light, be half a kg at most, um, but it adds a huge amount of stiffness. One of the things you do is cut the ends on a 45. You can see we've got a bit of a 45 there. That's so that when you put the steel in like that and the plate goes up against it there's in the corner here there's no chance of water sitting in that corner and rusting it out it basically runs down and then you down the bottom you have some sort of drain or you know bilge pump or whatever in this case it's almost irrelevant but it's just a good practice to get into whenever you're building your ribs weld a bit of flat bar on the edge of it and that way when I put it in I know I'm gonna be bang on to make sure that it's gonna line up it's just as Cast your mind back, we had an issue with this one here not being far enough back. You can see there's our original bulkhead mark and there's where we're currently at. So side on we're almost an inch. However, you can see there's a bit of flex in that. That's just by pushing it by hand. So I've got a piece of pipe. Just gonna jam it in with the hammer and then get this where it needs to go and tack it all up. Here's a straight edge I prepared earlier. Little bit more. Oh, perfecto, bro. So it's the right physical location in this dimension here, but the hull has buckled out slightly there's a bit of a wobble going on on the hull plate, which is to be expected when we take all of the strength of this bottom plate out. So what I need to do now is pull this hull back into the plate, keep the plate where it is, so I'll tack it at the top, and that'll hold it in its sort of location, and then use dogs to pull this in and get it exactly where we need it, up tight against that bulkhead, and then weld it all down. Ow, 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 ow. Ow, it's still burning. Well it's tacked, but so am I. So using a dog and wedge, I can just weld it onto this part of the boat and pull this part in just by a bit of brute force. Works quite lovely. So what was about half an inch gap is now within probably one or two mil. Perfect to weld up. So I just have to make sure, because our pipe fell out, I just have to make sure that the curve that was going that way is taken account of. Once that's straight, then we should be good to go to tack this bulkhead in. Now that we've got this thing welded in, there's a reasonable weld there, there's a tack there, 
and there's a decent weld there as well as a couple up on the other side of this one it's time to start doing the horizontal stringers that go in here so you've got ribs and stringers um, and they basically these stiffen the boat up obviously in this dimension and then you've got horizontal stringers to basically lock these guys up so that they don't go anywhere essentially what i want to create is a grid so this whole thing is going to be covered in these 75 mil bars and it um, adds an enormous amount of stiffness to the front end of the boat without adding the weight I managed to get in four of these grids as well as weld in that bulkhead so that it's nice and straight and parallel and the hull's back into the shape it needs to be and everything like that. So tomorrow I'm going to carry on making a few more of these grids. I'll get the ones on this side done. I've got, I'm thinking I'll add one in here as well, just I'm not 100% certain on that because I have to make sure I can get to this part of the hull. So I think I'll maybe leave that out, we'll just sort of see how we go. Um, but definitely we'll be adding in one in here, one in here and so on and just work our way up. Um, and then that puts us in a position that we've got really rigid from there forward we can start doing the last of the ribs that go in here the the two rear ribs um, and then once they're in we can start welding in the grid uh, that holds those together as well so that whole bow is going to have a grid section like that going on um, of the 75 by 6 flat bar our three-phase compressor as well the um, the beast that was what we were using to do all of our sandblasting needs a set of rings um, I actually gave it to the mechanics over in the yard over the back here um, they you know can repair that sort of thing it's a, it's an easy job for them they've got all the contacts to do it um, and I'm really glad that they can get some use out of it I don't have time to repair it, it would have been awesome to repair and maybe you know keep but I'm never going to use a compressor that powerful or that big again so hopefully they can get some use out of it so if you're watching it guys um, hope you enjoy it I found a rug <laughs> heavy isn't it? Yeah. It's pretty solid. Well built. Look we man. Look at the size of him and then the size of that thing. Mm -hmm. Oh he might slip. Just watch his back. <laughs> That's a great height. Look at that. Get a bed on there. He'll be happy as. Yeah. This is yours little man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been looking for one of these boxes for ages. I got a hundred dollars aluminium tread plate. Brilliant for storage. First the brew pegs, pop a carpet. Okay, now we've got a bit of stiffness in the front of the hull going on. You can see this plate down here, there's a wobble going sort of between this bulkhead and the um, fuel tank bulkhead just there. You can see the, the hull itself dips in, the, the hull's basically buckled in when I've taken the strength out of this front by, the, by removing these plates. What I need to do is get that hull fair so that I can then figure out where am I putting my ribs exactly. So what I'll do is I'll do some sort of plate on this side out here so that I can pull that hull outwards. But there's too much information to try and jam into a single episode, so we're going to be releasing two this week. I literally bend brew peg with a G-clamp, make a stupid hockey stick, go a bit berserk with the welder, and then drop our little man in for what we thought was a single tooth to be removed.